And good morning, everyone. Brand new edition of Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. My name is Steve Cashel, joined by my usual co-host, Dr. Brian Cole. He is the head team physician with the Chicago Bulls, one of the White Sox team physicians, also sports medicine specialist, orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush. Dr. Cole, how are you this morning? Doing great, Steve. Terrific to see you. Absolutely. Hey, I want to get started with one of the uh, kind of an interesting uh, story uh, right up our alley on this show with the NFL and uh, New York Jets player Kalechi Osemele files an injury grievance against the team. He was released after undergoing unauthorized surgery to repair a torn labrum. I mean, Dr. Cole, can you lend some insight to how teams analyze these situations, determine if surgery will be authorized or not? It's a new one, isn't it? Steve, this is, uh, I mean, when I, 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 when I read the provisional sort of storyline in this, I could see how this is probably one of the most challenging situations that a team can encounter and a player can encounter. And I, you know, a couple things that are, that probably have to be spelled out. Number one, there are issues that are somewhat unique, for example, in the NFL that may not play out in other sports uh, in terms of guaranteed uh, salaries and all of the, in the timeline on, the, on their tra- contract and so forth. But it speaks to a really interesting uh, process where, um, my, one physician, for example, an agent, a perceived agent of the team says, look, this is a problem you've had and it's not unsafe to play. And the team says, yes, it's not unsafe to play. If you can play and perform despite having discomfort, we need you to play because the season's only this long and without you, you, know, you we compromise the organization. And the player makes a, a, a different decision and says, says, look, I understand it may be safe or maybe he doesn't believe it's safe because that happens too and makes an independent decision that's at odds with what the organization wishes him to do. And, you know, obviously there's these sort of self-serving concepts where there are the perception of that. The team says, look, we just need you to play. And there's this potential storyline that says, look, you're you're not looking at the player's best interest or the doctor may not be, creates, you know, the distrust and all the other challenges that we have in these relationships. And or you have the player, his his or her family, an agent, um, and a lot of other people sort of whispering in people's ears, and it just turns into just mass chaos. So I will tell you, this is an unprecedented situation. I've, well, I can certainly understand how it could happen. I've never heard of it happening in this way. So it, you know, the way it likely played out is that team says, hey, not unsafe, pre-existing problem, all probably true, but the player's interpretation is different. In the end, the, the challenge is the player, you know, this again, this is a, an opinion statement, kind of level five for me. Um, you know, we cannot be in a position where we talk a player into one thing or another. Our job is to treat a player who just like another patient, and we've got to be really unbiased educators, right? You can't be a fan. You can't be a sole agent of the organization. Our allegiance and responsibility is to the player to say, look, this is the problem you've have, you have. It may have preexisted. That doesn't necessarily change anything, although it does help a player understand the gravity of the situation, which is why we get these preseason MRIs, for example, to show we got lots of pre-existing things in our joints, right? So when there's a new injury where the symptoms develop, we can say this was there before rather than it's all being new. Sure. But that being said, it may not change the decision-making. It's always ultimately going to be up to the athlete after an informed making an informed decision based upon a very unbiased education of this is the problem, this is what might or could happen if you play, this is what might or could happen if you don't play and, and get it treated, and what's to be expected if you do get it treated in terms of the likelihood of success and the timeline of getting better, Does that, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Osemele said he was hurt August 5th during a training camp practice and had been receiving treatment for his shoulder. He said he took pain-killing injections before the first three games. That's probably to his favor, right? When well, I mean, you know, we case. can't. You know, I can see how these facts lay out. I'll give you know what probably happened is, and what I've heard otherwise, and again, you have to check all the fact patterns. Is that this is something a tear that he might or could have had in another organization? Sure. And as I say, a, a lot of our baseball players, major league baseball players, have labral tears, for example. And there is no data that says that playing with them will make them worse. Oftentimes, decisions are made based upon player performance. If their performance is impaired uh, with an injury. Even though it's safe to play with it, that may be a key time to say, let's just get it fixed. That's one decision-making principle. Another is a player says, look, you know what? This is my time. I've got time to get better. I've got X amount of years on my contract. I need to get my surgery, get well, and prove that I have my asset value, right, and actually play after the recovery. So you can understand that these are not just health decisions. These are system decisions. And I always say that when you have a high-level athlete being paid a salary, this is their craft, this is their trade, 
the decisions you make for the same pathology that I might make with you, the timing and what we do may be very, very different. You could have the exact same problem, but the decision could be very different because you've got all all these different uh, uh, spokes on a hub of a tire, if you will, that weigh into making the ultimate decision what to do. I was a former Pro Bowl guard with the New York Jets and uh, making some big money. His base pay for 2019 was to be $9.85 million. Interesting stuff. It's crazy, yeah.